Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This will be my brand new Punisher video for Daredevil Born Again. We got our first look, first footage of John Bernthal Punisher, and it looks like he is laying into White Tiger. R.I.P. to White Tiger. But here's the thing. What we're seeing might be part of the larger plan that Kingpin is trying to pull off, and he might be doing something that he did during Daredevil Season 3, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. They're finishing up filming on Daredevil Born Again. The episodes will start releasing next year, so we won't have to wait too long before we actually start getting some real footage from it. And if it wasn't clear, everything that we're seeing with Daredevil Born Again right now, just like in general across the Marvel Universe on the 616 version of Earth, isn't really connected with what's happening in Deadpool and Wolverine and everything with the multiverse heading up to Avengers Secret Wars. All of that stuff is completely separate. Daredevil Born Again, all the Defenders characters coming back, like Punisher for instance, is meant to be the beginning of more ground level stuff happening in the MCU just in general. Kingpin is meant to be like the big Thanos level overarching villain for that ground level stuff. Vincent D'Onofrio, the Marvel people, were kind of calling him like a Thanos for the ground level heroes. The closest connection to what's happening here will tie in with the movies is like Spider-Man 4, but there's a lot of debate about what's going to happen with that movie between Marvel and Sony, like whether they're going to spin it up into another big Avengers level multiverse movie, or if it's going to be more friendly neighborhood Spider-Man ground level with Daredevil and Kingpin. I am sure there's going to be all kinds of talk about that for the rest of the year between Marvel and Sony trying to argue about what kind of movie it should turn into. But in the actual clip of Punisher, it looks like he's double tapping White Tiger catching him as he comes around a corner. Normally, this would make it seem like White Tiger is going to be a villain during the events of Season 1, and Punisher is just finally getting him after the entire season. Like, I think this is meant to be from the last couple of episodes. So maybe the idea is that Punisher is wrapping up some loose ends, but here's the thing. There might actually be some trickery going on here. This might be a misdirect. This person wearing the Punisher logo might not actually be John Bernthal's Punisher, even though he was spotted on set filming when they were filming this scene. This just might be a corrupt police officer working for Kingpin wearing the Punisher logo so that people think that Punisher is going around killing a bunch of these vigilantes. This might be a version of Kingpin pulling the same trick that he did during Daredevil Season 3 with the Bullseye character, who we also just got a bunch of footage of. I'll talk about that in a second, too, because we just got a bunch of footage with Wilson Bethel's version of Bullseye from Daredevil Season 3 back, too. But if you remember, during Daredevil Season 3, the whole idea is that Kingpin wanted to get rid of Daredevil, so he had Bullseye dress up in the Daredevil costume, kill a whole bunch of people that made it seem like it was the real version of Daredevil that was doing all that stuff so that he could publicly go after him, and people would think that Daredevil was the actual villain when he was not. Kingpin also pulled a similar trick during Daredevil Season 1, where he tried to make Daredevil seem like he was a vigilante who was doing all these terrible things, and Kingpin was the actual hero. So the idea here in this scene is that Kingpin might have just ordered a hit on White Tiger wanting to get rid of White Tiger and just ordered one of his corrupt police officers that had been working for him, which we actually kind of got a taste of during the Echo series during the five-year time jump, like the police were afraid of him basically doing whatever he told them to do. And we know heading into Daredevil Born Again, Kingpin has been running for mayor. I did a video for all the footage for that. Basically, he's running on an anti-vigilante campaign, making it seem like he's cleaning up New York City, but secretly just using it as an excuse to get rid of Daredevil, White Tiger now, Punisher, Spider-Man, all the ground-level heroes, essentially. Any of the other Defenders characters that are coming back. And reportedly, part of the plot for Punisher during Daredevil Born Again was going to be that he was going after a bunch of corrupt police officers that were using his symbol, but doing a lot of really shady stuff. And it seems like this is one of those instances. There's some kind of corrupt police officer that's killing White Tiger, wearing the Punisher's logo on Kingpin's orders, making it seem like Punisher is doing all this stuff. They filmed a bunch of episodes already, but what they did is they hired a bunch of the Marvel Netflix people to come back, like the executive producer from the Punisher Netflix series. Big coincidence here that you're filming scenes with the Punisher and you have the Punisher people from that TV series coming back to do this. They filmed a brand new pilot episode, which is essentially episode one, and then a couple more episodes. It sounds like the last couple of episodes, then a little more footage for the rest of the episodes in between that and are reworking a lot of footage they already shot for the first version of the show. Basically filming a bunch of new stuff and remixing it with the stuff that they already filmed to make it a better show overall. It's not really clear if any of the Punisher's specific storyline changed from the first version of the show to the second version. I don't think it's changed that much. Like, it still seems like it's the same basic vibe for his character. Originally, he was meant to be, like, one of the biggest characters that were coming back, which is why, like, every single Defenders Marvel Netflix character wasn't coming back in Season 1. 
but we just got all that footage from the brand new version of what seems like the pilot episode or the first couple of episodes with Wilson Bethel's version of Bullseye coming back and fighting Daredevil. Also a lot, a lot of Foggy Nelson and Karen Page. Daredevil's new suit looks just like the Netflix red suit, only he's upgraded the front and back a little. Like The front is all red now with just a very little bit of black. It's a little bit more like the comics, but sadly no Daredevil symbol on the front yet. More on that in a second, because I think this scene might be a flashback, so the suit might change multiple times through the course of the series. And Bullseye's new comic book suit looks like a combination of Marco Checho's Bullseye suit from 2017 and Bullseye's costume during the Chip Zdarsky Daredevil run. It's a great way to reintroduce the characters, and it's a great start. Like, this is the first of probably many different comic book costumes. And it does fit with the more gritty, realistic tone and vibe of the Daredevil Netflix series. Only bummer, though, is that there is no actual Bullseye target on the forehead. Maybe, maybe at some point that will change. During the fight scene, it looks like Bullseye is trying to kill Karen Page at Josie's bar because in the other scenes they released, Matt, Foggy, Karen were having fun at Josie's until an argument between them broke out. If you saw people in your feed wondering if Bullseye was going to kill Karen Page, getting worried about that, that's because Bullseye killed her in the comics. She's supposed to be in at least three episodes of the new Daredevil Born Again series, so I don't expect her to be killed. But from the looks of Daredevil's fight with him, Bullseye gets at least a couple shots off at Karen and he tries to stop him. So maybe Bullseye, like maybe, lands a shot on her, but doesn't kill her, just wounds her very badly. It kind of seems like we should be saying our prayers for Foggy Nelson because he's the one on the ground here, so maybe he actually takes the bullet for Karen Page. I'm going to go on a limb here and say that because they were going to kill Foggy in the original version of the show, they probably didn't in this version, so he's probably the one that just gets severely wounded. A lot of people seeing red flashing warning lights here. This will probably seem like a familiar scenario. They kind of did a version of this during Daredevil Season 3 where Bullseye was going after Matt Murdock's friends. This is really just meant to be the continuation of that. But in the original canceled version of Daredevil Born Again, they were supposed to have killed Karen Page and Foggy Nelson before the present day of the series picks up, which is why I think this scene is actually similar to what they'd originally planned, but Bullseye really did wind up killing Karen Page somehow. I think the actual fight scene goes down during episode one, and it might be part of flashbacks to explain what happens before the snap. Just based on Foggy Nelson's haircut from the new pilot episode that they were filming a couple days ago, what might be happening at the beginning of episode one is they might do a flashback to explain what happened to everyone before the snap, because we know that Daredevil is around during the five-year time jump, so he didn't get snapped. We know that Kingpin was around too during that five-year time jump, so he also did not get snapped because that's where that whole Echo fight scene takes place and where Kingpin pulls her out of police custody. The other reason why I think they're going to have scenes that take place before the snap, like before the five-year time jump, is because there was a newspaper on set while they were filming that brand new version of episode one, and it features a newspaper that talks about Kingpin's run for mayor and whether or not he's going to be able to fix New York City. Like, it talks about his plan to fix the city and whether or not it's going to help him win the mayorship. And I think in the present day of the series, he's already meant to have become mayor, like he'll have won the election already. So I just think episode one is going to have a couple time jumps to explain what's happened since the end of Daredevil season three, and kind of catch people up to present day. And most of the series will take place in the year 2026, well after the events of Spider-Man No Way Home. So I think the way we get to this Daredevil vs. Bullseye rematch fight scene is the moment with Bullseye's attack is meant to take place later in the night or is connected to the moment of them leaving their law office. And it looks like Matt and Foggy get into some kind of argument outside Josie's bar before the Bullseye attack. Then it seems like Bullseye attacks, Daredevil changes into his suit, they fight, Daredevil barely saves Karen Page, and they might just use this fight scene the way it goes down to set up more of the circumstances in the present day of the show and explain a little bit more about why Daredevil is the way he is during the five-year time jump because he almost failed to protect Karen Page. An early theory, if Foggy gets badly injured trying to save Karen Page or take the bullet for her, he will be back later in the series, as well as Karen Page. And part of what's going on here with the fight scene, too, is this is meant to play into Kingpin's run for mayor because he runs on an anti-vigilante campaign. Like, see, look at all these terrible vigilantes causing all this damage all around New York City. My plan is to get rid of all this. But really, he's just being shady Kingpin, using it as an excuse to get rid of Daredevil, Spider-Man, the Punisher, other heroes who are also kind of like vigilantes. 
Kevin Feige keeps talking about how the events of Daredevil Born Again are going to set up Spider-Man 4. The version that they're trying to make of Spider-Man 4 is more of a ground-level, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man movie. Daredevil and Kingpin are supposed to be in it. What they could do is they could just have Kingpin hire a lot of the Sinister Six villains or other Spider-Man villains, and then they could go after Spider-Man in the movie. This gets a little deeper into the whole Spider-Man related plot of all things, but a lot of people are wondering how they're going to pay off that Venom symbiote post credit scene during Spider-Man No Way Home. What they always could do is they could use Matt Gargan, who's the Scorpion inside the MCU, and they could give him the symbiote first. If you haven't read the Spider-Man or the Venom comics, Matt Gargan did get the symbiote in the comics. He did become a version of Venom after Eddie Brock. I still think it's a little early to give Spider-Man the symbiote during Spider-Man 4, but they eventually do want to pay that off inside the MCU, so they could save that for like Spider-Man 5 or Spider-Man 6 or whatever they want to do. Because we still have Avengers Secret Wars, there's even Avengers 5 before that, and it would be cool to see him get the symbiote during a version of Secret Wars just so they could do more comic book accurate stuff. Bringing things back around to the Punisher, so because they're doing so much with him during Daredevil Born Again Season 1, reportedly they're also planning on continuing the Punisher Netflix series in some form on Disney+. Plus. It'd still be like a TVMA, very hardcore kind of series, but if that winds up working out, let me know what you want them to do with the next season, so to speak, of Punisher. It'd be kind of like Punisher Born Again, like they're doing Daredevil Born Again as Daredevil Season 4 of the Netflix series. It'd be the same deal for Punisher basically a Punisher season three. Hopefully we'll get some more news about that pretty soon, but as we get more Daredevil footage, of course I'll do more videos for that and more Defenders coming back. Speaking of people in the MCU, we just heard about Henry Cavill actually coming to the MCU as a new character, so click here to learn about that and click here for all my Deadpool and Wolverine videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.